Micromotors are a quite powerful tool in your studio. Hi, I'm Melissa Muir, and in this video, I'm going to introduce you to the 1070, which is a brush type micromotor. Let's take a look now. The 1070, like I said, is a brush type motor, which indicates that there is some maintenance that is going to be required. You People ask all the time what the difference between a brushless and a brush type motor is. Well, and there's a few differences that you're going to notice. One, our handpiece is going to be a little bit louder because we need the air circulation because we have different brushes. Now we just unscrew this down here at the bottom and that gives us access to our brushes. This will need to be maintained every now and then. You have to kind of come in, blow this out, and you'll need to replace those brushes. There are some step-by-step -step instructions for how to do that, and you just want to follow that in the manual. The first thing I want to do is I want to hook in my handpiece. Now, on the, our little connector, we have a little dimple, and that is going to line up here at the top. Simply insert that into place. Next, we need to plug in our foot pedal here on the back. Once again, we have a dimple that we can then place and align it so that the pins will go in straight. Finally, make sure that your machine is plugged in and we are ready to go. When setting up your micro motor, after you've plugged everything in, also check this little switch down here to verify that it is at the correct voltage. Automatically, it will be set for whichever country origin you have ordered your piece for and will come with the proper plug. But if you ever need to travel and switch that, it's a very easy little toggle switch. Now, anytime you use any kind of power equipment, be certain that you're taking the right safety precautions. Make sure you wear your glasses, any face masks, and read the instructions before you get started. Now that we have our machine hooked up, let's talk about a few of the features on here. Here you've got your speed control, which will allow you to go from 1,000 to 38,000 RPM. It also has an overload indicator, so if you happen to bear down a little too much, your piece will stop and it will tell you that you have overloaded it. To clear that, simply turn it off and turn it back on to reset. You also have the ability to take this from hand control to foot control, and you have a forward and a reverse. To turn on our machine, I'm going to switch that on and off toggle switch. If I switch this over to the hand control, notice that it automatically goes. So you'll want to make sure you take advantage of that off option here on the dial. If you want to control with a foot pedal, simply toggle over your hand foot switch, turn your dial to whatever speed you want to go, and press your foot pedal. To swap out any accessories that you may have, simply hold on to the base of the handpiece and rotate counterclockwise, pull out the mandrel, and then you can insert your next accessory like such. To close it, just rotate the opposite way and you are ready to go. It should be noted that when you receive your machine, it will come with a blank shank that is in your handpiece. I highly suggest that you keep this in here at all times when it is not in use. That will keep your collets from being damaged. In addition to the rotary style handpiece, this control box can accept other handpieces. Now you can order that in different configurations or you can just purchase these in addition too. So for instance, when I ordered this with a rotary handpiece and the 332nd inch collet inside, it is a 1070. But if I order this with a handpiece with a 1 8 inch collet inside, it is then a 1071 8. I can also order this with a hammer hand piece. Now the hammer hand piece can be purchased again separately or if I happen to order this all together, it becomes a 1090. So like I said, there's various configurations that you can use with the control box and the different hand pieces. To swap out a hand piece, you would simply unplug one, line up the dimple on the next hand piece, plug that in and you're ready to go. Another thing to note about this particular control box is that the speed is not controlled by the control box itself, but by the handpiece. For instance, if I'm using a rotary handpiece, this will go from about 1,000 to 38,000 RPM. Now, if I switch over to the hammer handpiece, this will go up to 2,500 strokes per minute. So it has kind of a range of one to two strokes per minute all the way up to 2,500. When using a hammer handpiece, you have multiple options available for the tips. And please check out some of our other videos 
on the hammer hand piece and its accessories. When using the hammer hand piece, you will be able to actuate this either using the foot pedal or by hand. To operate this, I'm going to push down on my foot pedal and you will hear that the hand piece begins to tick. However, it has not yet actuated until we give it some pressure and push down on the anvil point itself. Whenever using a Forda micromotor, be certain that you read through all the directions and safety guidelines before you begin. If you have any more questions, be sure to drop us a line and we'll get right back to you.